Hi, welcome to Wisdom Analysis, a place where we make chemistry easy and fun. So on today's episode of the Jam series, we are going to topic four. So that was topic. Okay, so this is a periodic table. Now the verticals are called groups, while the horizontals, the horizontal rows are called periods. Okay, don't think of this guy. These are just explanations of how to understand the periodic table. Okay, this is the main periodic table here. All right. So these ones are called the transition elements, the transition elements, while these are called the inner transition element which came out from these two vacant spots okay now now this is group one that is vertically we count down hydrogen lithium sodium potassium rubidium casium and francium vertically downward so that's how group one is now you can see that all group one elements have one electron in their outermost shell you can see that in hydrogen you can see that in lithium you can see that in sodium all of them have one electron in their outermost shell and now let's go to group two now writing out group two elements out they all have two electrons in their outermost shell you can see that in beryllium magnesium and so on and so forth so group is the number of electrons in the outermost shell that is what will give the group number now let's go to periods so let's just pick period three that is the third horizontal pick random elements from period three all of them are from period three so now what makes all of them to fall under period three so now these are the different atomic numbers now if you draw the the atomic structure of sodium you can see that sodium has three shells aluminium has three shells and also chlorine has three shells so the number of shells is what gives the period. The number of shells is what gives the period. Okay, so electronic configuration, this is simply how electrons are arranged into shells and orbitals in the atom. Simply put, how electrons are arranged in an atom. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Okay, so how many electrons are here? 18, that is argon. So this is electronic configuration of argon. So now you'll be wondering, how do we get this as argon? Now this one, two, and three that you are seeing here, they are called the quantum number. Okay, so when you draw the shells like this, the number of shells, the first shell is K, second L, and the third M. The first shell is giving the quantum number one, second given the quantum number two third three and so on and so forth but remember the actual name for this quantum number is called principal quantum number so one there is the first shell two is the second shell and three is the third shell okay now you can also see something like one s you can see two s there the, what is this sp and what is this sp we are seeing actually they are called the orbital sets or the sub shells that is each shell is broken down into these four subshells sharp principal diffuse and fundamental those are the four shells that's what s p d and f means so one has only the s subshell does not have the others two the, which is the second shell can have the other two so now i'm trying to write out the possibilities of all the subshells in each of them so you can see that one only has s 2 has s and p 3 has s p d 4 has s p d f 5 has and so on and so forth so you can see that the first shell has only s the second shell has s and p and now this is the ones that they all have for the others if you try to memorize this okay so now you can see that now this is called an orbital okay an orbital has maximum two electrons now the s subshell which is called an orbital set it has only one orbital that means it has two 
maximum electron that is it has a maximum of two electrons it can carry now the p has three orbitals so it have a maximum of six electrons it can carry since each orbital has two electrons maximum now for the d since it has five orbitals 10 electrons maximum now for the f it has seven whole orbitals so it will have 14 electrons maximum since each orbital can carry two electrons okay now this is a useful table for you to memorize okay so for the s p d and f s has with this orbital this is the maximum electrons s has one orbital p3 d5 and f7 okay so maximum of electrons one times two give us two three times two give us six five times two give us ten seven times two give us 14 so that's the maximum number of electrons okay now this formula is for the maximum number of electrons in a shell and that n means the quantum number which is one two three four given to the shells okay so now let's look at the second shell which only has two s and two p like we said earlier it does not have d so this is the number of subshells now know that s can only contain two electrons maximum p is six electrons maximum so it's a total of eight electrons the second shell can have now using the old method we solve out and put two there into the quantum number point we see that they all have eight electrons maximum proving that the principle was correct okay so the s orbital set looks like this the electrons are concentrated at the middle and now the p orbital set looks like this the electrons are concentrated at the ends okay these are the p orbital set looks like that's what the p orbital set now writing now the electronic configuration of argon again 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 and 3p6 now how do we come up with a beautiful electronic configuration like this now it follows three major principles the first one is Pauli's exclusion principle that no two electrons will have the same electronic configuration and an orbital can only contain two electrons and they must have opposite spins now the Huns rule states that when filling orbitals electrons spread out first before pairing or cause so the first one like this is wrong but the second one must spread out first before pairing will occur while off balance principle states that in filling of electrons the lower energy subshells are filled before the higher ones okay so where we have 2s and 2p s has lower energy than 2p so 2s will be filled first before the 2p okay so from the off balance principle we can make a rule okay from this um shells that is one two three and four with their different subshells they can carry now we can make the rule that if we draw arrows like this okay sorry the arrow is backward okay if we draw arrows down like this they give the order of the filling of shells that is they are at increasing energy levels so we start from 1s to 2p to 2p then 3s 3p 4s 4d now 4p 5s 4d 5p 6s and as we are going like that we are following the arrow that is is in, is in increasing energy levels so these ones that are written first will be filled first before the further ones so they have lower energy than these ones that are after them so 3d is filled before 4p you can see that 4s is filled before 4s is filled before 3d there because from this principle we have that okay so let's take examples from elements so this is hydrogen hydrogen is h z there means atomic number that's atomic number one okay so it has only one electron so it's only one s one and you can see that the s orbital set can contain two more electrons but since hydrogen has only one atom it has only one there now for helium atomic number two it completes the s orbital and you can see that the second electron will now have an opposite spin now for lithium the 1s2 is already 1s is already completed so it goes to 2s1 so this is how you write the electronic configuration you can see that when the orbital is filled it gives opposite spin for going to the other one again now carbon is 6 1s2 2s2 which is the s is now complete 2p 
two. Now you can see that we're going to spread out instead of pairing that is one through. Okay, now for scandium, scandium atomic number is 21. Okay, now scandium is a transition element. It belongs to the D block. That is, they will start to be filling the D orbitals. Now, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Now, all these ones are already full. That is 18 already. That is 18. So, it needs 3 more to form 21. So now, remember, we said you are filling 4s before the 3d orbital because 4s has lower energy. So 4s we add 2 there and the 3d will now have 1. Okay, so that's how we do that. So the 3d, but you can still rearrange this as 3d1, 4s2, doesn't matter. But as long as you fill the 4s first before the 3d. Now, titanium is 22. We can see that at this point we have 18. It needs 4 to get to 22. So the same we fill the 4s first before the 3d2. And you can also rearrange it to write 3d2 before 4s2. It doesn't matter, just that you fill the 4s2 first. Now chromium is 24. Okay, so at this point we have 18, right? We need six more. Hope you can see it. We need six more to form 24. Okay, so 4s2, 3d4. Okay, this will have been correct, but it is wrong. Why is it wrong? Half filled shells or full filled shells have more stability. So you can see that 3D is, so you can rearrange it to be 4S1, 3D5 to make the D shell to be half filled. Since we know that the D can contain up to 10 electrons maximum. So we promote one from the 4S to the 3D5. So you can also rearrange this to be like this, making the 3D5 to come before the 4S1. Okay, it's still the same thing. Okay, now let's go to copper. I'm choosing this, these elements because of the situations that occur in them. Now copper, we write out the electronic configuration. Now up to 3P6, we have 18. It needs 11 more to complete it. Now we might have just gone ahead to write 4S2, 3D9. But remember we said half few shells are more stable than full few shells. So to make this a full shell, 3D will have to be 3D10. So we promote one electron from 4S to the 3D, we should now make 4s1 3d10 as the electronic configuration that is accepted. Now, same we can rearrange this to be 3d10 4s1. Still the same thing. Okay, so this part of the periodic table is called the S block, which means that any element you pick from here, the last electron will fill the S orbital set. So you can see that pick randomly potassium, the last electron is, is in the S orbital set. Now this one is called the P block. This is called the P block because the last electron will be in the P orbital set. You can see that from fluorine here. The last electron is in the P orbital. Same way these middle ones, which are transition elements, are called the D block, while the inner transition elements are F block, following the same principle. Their last electrons are in the F orbital set. Now let's go to hybridization. Now, what is hybridization? Hybridization is just simply the mixing of different orbitals to form a new hybrid orbital. So if this is an S orbital, and we know that this is a P orbital set, S and this is a P orbital set, these are three P orbitals. Remember, it's an orbital set. Each of those squares are orbitals. So if they come together, one is S and the other three are P, forms the SP3 hybrid orbital set. That is two orbi orbital sets coming together, one from S and three from P. But if we take only two from P and take one from S and we put them together, one S and two P, it forms SP2 hybrid orbital set. That means SP will have only S and one S and one P. Okay, so that's how what hybrid orbital set is all about, the mixing of two hybrid orbitals. So now let's talk about the sp3 hybrid orbital sets now this occurs in a compound such as 
methane where carbon is bonded to four atoms so first we write the ground states and the excited states so ground states is the normal electronic configuration states of the central atom while the excited state is the way it moves in order to form the hybrid orbital okay so this is how it will look like this is how methane looks like so the central atom is carbon so now what we are going to do is to write since carbon is six the electronic configuration is 1s2 2s2 and 2p2 so now we fill the electronic configuration like this okay so something like this so to be able to go into the excited state you know that to be able to go into the excited state to form the sp3 now this sp3 each of them will have one one electron each so you can see that if we promote an electron from 2s to the 2p2 now the 2s will now have one electron and then the other electron we are promoting will come to the 2p so to now form the p orbitals to be 1 1 1 and the s orbital to be 1 to be able to form the hybrid orbital set so this is what i'm talking about so 2p2 will mix with 2p4 that is four electrons right forming the sp3 now all of them will look like this now this is the s this is a p orbital this is a p orbital this is a p orbital which are those three ones and that one electron is remaining there while the other electron is promoted to the p orbitals making something like this so sp3 so now the initial excited state is written as now 1s is now 1s2 2s1 because it has promoted one electron to the 2p so the 2p will now be 3 so 2s1 and 2p3 will now come together to form the sp3 hybrid orbital okay so the new electronic configuration of carbon will now look like this this is the sp3 now 1s2 and sp3 now each having one electron you can see that the 1s2 is already filled because the one orbital can only contain two electrons you can see all these ones have single single electrons so the four electrons of hydrogen that is the four hydrogen atoms is bonding with will come into these empty spaces one two three and four so since hydrogen is since carbon is bonding into um the four hydrogen so that's how it's now go so now the sp3 looks like this so the hydrogen will bond here hydrogen will bond here hydrogen will bond here hydrogen will bond here so it will look like something like this and now this bond is called tetrahedral say tetrahedral bond so the sp bond is always tetrahedral okay now let's go to sp2 that is, is 1s orbital and what 2p orbitals combining you can find that in bromine tet trihydride bromine trihydride that is borine and now we write the ground states and the excited states okay so the ground state of bromine bromine has the atomic number five Bromine has the atomic number five. Sorry, that is five. Bromine has the atomic number five. So we are going to write the electronic configuration, which is one s two, two s two, and two p what one. You can see that. Now, how the ground state look like? Now, one s two is already filled up. Two s two is already filled up. Two p one. Now having one electron here. Now to be able to form sp two, one electron will be promoted from to be able to form 1s2, one electron is promoted from the 2s to the 2p so that it will be 1s orbital and 2p orbitals each having one, one electron each. So this is what I'm talking about. So it's now be 2s1 having only one electron and it's now be 2p2 having two electrons like this spread out. So now these three orbitals, one of s and the other two p orbitals that are one one each. We now come together to form the sp2 orbital hybrid orbital set so now this is what we now go to combine with the three hydrogen so writing the electrons like this the three hydrogen will now come in like this as i'm writing them in broken lines so you can see the difference so that's how the three hydrogen will now combine okay so the sp2 so the sp2 orbital set looks like something like this okay bromine in the center and then hydrogen will bond the hydrogen will bond the hydrogen will bond the and now the angle between the bonds is 120 degree 
Okay, this is three. 120 degree. Now, the bonds in SP2 is always trigonal. It's called a trigonal bond. Okay, let's go to SP. Now, you know that this is 1S orbital and 1P orbital. Now, we can find that in beryllium difluoride. Now, we even get in these examples. How we do we know if a compound is SP3, SP2, or SP? Now, you can see that the SP3 has four orbitals, one from S and three from P. The SP2 has three orbitals and SP has two orbitals. Now, you can see that the central atom here, beryllium, is bonded towards two fluorine atoms. You can see the secret, right? Now, now look at it. Now, SP3, we said the example was what? Was a um, methane. Okay, sorry. SP2 is something like this. When the central atom is bonded to four other atoms, it is sp3. Now, when the central atom is bonded to three other atoms, it is sp2. It is sp2. Now, that's why we use methane here. The central atom is carbon bonded to four hydrogen atoms. And for the sp2, the central atom is bromine bonded towards three hydrogen atoms. Now, for the SP, the central atom is bonded to two hydrogen atoms, which is now beryllium difluoride. So, the central atom beryllium is bonded to two hydrogen atoms. So, that's the secret of how we are getting the examples, okay? Now, the ground state of bromine and then the excited state. Now, the electronic configuration of, sorry, is beryllium. The electronic configuration of beryllium will be 1s2, 2s2. Now, you can see that both of them are filled. So now, for us to form the SP, we need a p orbital so in the excited states we have one s2 already complete now one electron we promoted from the two s so it's with two s1 having one electron there and producing the two p or hybrid orbital set to contain that one electron that promoted out now the one the two s orbital and this two p orbital that have one electron each is what we now bond together is what we now come together to form the sp orbital say so that is one s orbital one p orbital from the sp so you can do that the fluorine electrons will now come in here come in here to form the bonding so that's how sp is so now sp look like something like this something like this if i can so the sp look like something like this and then Beryllium in the center, fluorine bond at one end, fluorine bond at one end. Now, the angle, this is beryllium to this side, fluorine at one end, fluorine at one end. This angle is 180 degree, just like your mathematics said, so the angle in a straight line is 180 degree. So, this is called a linear bond, that is a bonding in a straight line. Now, sp3 is tetrahedral, and the angle is 109.5 degree. sp2 is trigonal trigonal and the angle is 120 degree while sp is a linear bond that is a bond in a straight line angle is 180. thanks for watching the video if you love the video don't forget to hit the like button so more people can see this video and leave comments or whatever you don't understand or any questions you want to ask i'll be glad to answer them and also subscribe if you have not subscribed to this channel all right see you in the next video bye